You're watching Ravens Run Down by Chat Sports. I am merely Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. ESPN's Matt Miller has released a seven-round mock draft for every team in the National Football League and every pick. On today's show, we're going to go over all of the Ravens draft picks, show you what Matt Miller had to say, react to it, and get to know these players a little bit more here on today's show. Before we do, a little kind of trivia question of sorts for the flock out there that I want to know. How many former Ravens first-round picks can you name for the history of this franchise? Who can name the most first-round picks for the Baltimore Ravens? Whoever can in the comments section. You're going to get a shout-out on a later edition of Ravens Rundown. But let's see. Let's put you to the test. you, you got to see if you can answer the most, but also correctly answer them as well. No cheating, no Googling. Get in that comment section and let's see what you got. Let's go over the Ravens draft picks one by one. It begins with the 30th overall selection in the first round. Second round at 62. Third round at 93. Fourth round, they have two selections at 113 and at 130 as well. And then the Ravens have, after those five picks, four more, nine in total, with the fifth round at 165, a sixth round pick at 218, and then two seventh round picks at 228 and at 250. So a lot to project for the Baltimore Ravens here. Let's go ahead and begin with the first pick for the Baltimore Ravens at number 30 overall. Matt Miller projects the Ravens selecting. dun 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 Lad McConkey, wide receiver, Georgia. Oh, boy. Uh, I got some thoughts on this. Let's begin with Matt Miller of what he had to say of why Lad McConkey to the Ravens with the 30th overall selection. With Zay Flowers looking like a true wide receiver one in his rookie season, 77 catches, 858 yards, five touchdowns, the Ravens have to feel good about their developing passing game. But let's keep this building, especially since Rashad Bateman hasn't emerged and Odell Beckham Jr. is a free agent. McConkie is a precise route runner with 4.39 speed and the stop-start quickness to dominate on underneath routes. Coming off of an ankle injury in 2023, McConkie had a really strong senior bowl week and dominated his combine workout. He's a round one target on my board. Are you serious? You cannot be serious, in the words of John McEnroe. We're using a first-round pick on a short, white receiver. Lad McConkey? Ah, oh, hell no. Hell no. I am totally against this. This is a great wide receiver class this year. And where the Ravens pick at 30, I got potential options like, I don't know, Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell, Keon Coleman, maybe Brian Thomas potentially falls there. But no way in hell am I wasting my time with a short wide receiver like Lad McConkie. Now, he did win two national championships at Georgia. He won the Warfel Trophy, whatever that means. Um, second team all eight, uh, SEC selection back in 2022. But I'll tell you this much. Mel Kuyper, he knows ball. Matt Miller doesn't know ball so much. Mel has him as the number 10 wide receiver on his big board. Well, these frauds like Matt Miller are using first-round picks on him. Now, if you need more reason to believe me, if I haven't convinced you enough already, which I feel like I've already done a good job of, let's show you these statistics. I understand he had the ankle injury and all that, but hide the women and children because Lad McConkey in nine games had less than 500 yards. Only two touchdowns and 30 catches. No thanks. All right, let's let you weigh in now. Should the Ravens draft Lad McConkey, this short white receiver that I have no desire to bring into my football team with a first-round pick? Why for yes, in for no. Why in the comments section, tell us what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time, the place to go for the best seats, the lowest prices guaranteed, whether you're looking for tickets to sporting events, concerts, theater productions, Game Time's got it all. And you can save $20 off your first purchase when you use the promo code chat sports. Orioles baseball is underway. I really like this Orioles team this year. I think they got a shot to go all the way to the World Series, folks. 
Um, here's how it works. Let's say you want to go to a O's game. Pick the event you want to go to. Then pick the seat. You get to see if you like the seat or not. Look for a flash deal and save some money. And then from there, you're getting your tickets just like that, whether it's Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, uh, also all major credit card providers as well. Game time makes it simple, makes it easy. I did this last year to go see the O's play. You can do the same thing too. Download Game Time today, promo code Chat Sports to save twenty dollars off of your first purchase. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Terms and conditions do apply. Download Game Time today. All right, let's go to the second round now. This is where Miller is projecting the Ravens go with Michigan corner. Mike Sandstrill with the 62nd overall pick there in the second round. Let's listen to what Miller had to say about this. How do great football players always fall to the Ravens? Sandstrill was a do-it-all defensive back and leader at Michigan, posting six interceptions and two touchdowns. In Baltimore, he would play a nickel role, very similar to what Brian Branch did in his rookie season for the Lions. And Branch ended up being one of the best rookie defensive players in all of football. Now, this pick I can get behind. I can live with this pick for the Baltimore Ravens uh, to go with what I think was an elite corner in college football last year and to slip to the second round. I think he's being undervalued. I mean, Mel's got him as the number 10 corner in this year's draft. A first-team All-American, first-team All-Pin uh, Big Ten selection, Won a national championship with the Wolverines on that nasty defense. I don't think he's getting enough respect. I'd be very happy with this pick for Baltimore there in the second round if they decided to do that. Let's go ahead and move ahead to the third round. We'll we'll show you some statistics first real quick. Then we'll go to our third round pick. Get ahead of myself there. This is what I'm talking about, the game changer, the playmaker that uh, Sandstrill is. Six interceptions. In 15 games last year, six pass breakups, five tackles for loss. As the kids say, he is him. Uh, I think this would be a good fit for Baltimore. There would be no complaints whatsoever for me. Let's go to the third round now, and the Baltimore Ravens go with Kansas Jayhawk offensive guard Dominic Pooney with their 93rd overall pick. Here's more from Miller on the choice. A college tackle, Pooney could battle for the starting left guard spot in camp also providing insurance across the offensive line as a five-position player. Sounds versatile to me. And if you guys know me, you guys know that I am a proud Kansas Jayhawk, and I'm so excited what Lance Leipold has done with this football program. We're actually talking about guys getting drafted and getting drafted by the Ravens. You mean to tell me we finally have a mock draft? Or the Ravens take a Kansas Jayhawk. Sign me up! Not to mention the Ravens have a big need at the offensive line, and we've already gone two picks without getting offensive line help. Dominic Pony doesn't matter if he's going to play tackle, guard, center, whatever. He can literally do it all, and there would be certainly a place for him on this Baltimore Ravens roster as far as I'm concerned. Great story. Started at the Division II level at uh, Central Missouri, in Warrensburg, Missouri. Then he transferred to Kansas for his final two seasons. Ended up being a first-team All-Big 12 selection. Mel's got him as the number four offensive guard in this year's draft. So a ton of value here to get him in the third round like this. And the PFF numbers were incredible for Pooney last year. A overall grade of 80.6, pass blocking grade of 90.4, run block grade of 72.3, in over 700 snaps of action. I think this would be a win-win for the Ravens if they decide to do this. Who's a player the Ravens should draft? We've talked about a few names already. We've got plenty more to get to here in just a second. Wait in the comment section. Tell us what you think. Drop us a name who you believe would be a good fit. We are covering your Baltimore Ravens each and every day here on Ravens Rundown with the latest happenings in your favorite team. We got you the news and rumors. We're talking draft, free agency, trades, all of that and more. Lock us in. Subscribe now for free. Never miss a moment. If the Ravens make a move, we're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down here on the channel. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Subscribe now for free. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's go through the rest of the draft now. We'll kind of go rapid fire through the back end here. Fourth round, the Ravens go linebacker, go Trevin Wallace at 113. The Ravens obviously are going to need some help with Patrick Queen gone. And with Wallace, you get a thick Build, sure, tackler. 
which is exactly what I want to hear when it comes to that position. So some nice value to get a player like this in the fourth round. Also in the fourth round, we go offense here as Miller projects the Ravens going with Oregon running back Bucky Irving with the 130th selection. You already brought in Derrick Henry. Keaton Mitchell might not be back till October or November from his injury that he suffered there towards the end of last season. Gus Edwards is gone. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, of course, is gone. You're going to need more bodies. You're going to need younger bodies uh, to fill the void there. I think Bucky Irving could be a ten- potential good fit. And he's a nice change of direction back. Uh, also very good as a pass catcher as well. So he would bring something totally different to the Baltimore Ravens offense as far as that goes. Fifth round, the Ravens go defensive tackle with uh, Illinois defensive tackle Keith Randolph Jr. with the 165th overall pick. Uh, this is a guy that's got good size and frame. He plugs gaps well. That's the number one thing that he does is plugs those gaps and uh, creates some hell, creates some havoc for opposing offenses on those offensive lines there. Sixth round, we go offensive tackle from UCF. Tylen Grable with the 218th selection. And the scouting report on him was pretty interesting. It's all about the hips when it comes to Tylen Grable. And the hips don't lie. That was Shakira who said hips don't lie, right? Um, as uh, producer Colin confirms. Yes, it was Shakira. As Shakira once said, hips don't lie. That's the case. This guy, he, he, he can move. He, he can move it and uh, – you got to move it, move it, right? That's what he does. We go to the seventh round, and uh, at 228, we find ESPN projecting Oregon safety Evan Williams with this pick. And you already had me with the name Evan Williams, although that's one of the cheaper liquors. If you're drinking Evan Williams, then you, you probably need to go see your doctor or something because it's not going to end well. Uh, you need to be drinking Jack Daniels instead. But that's a whole other story for another day. He's got the mindset of a linebacker. He is a hitter, folks. He is going to be aggressive. He's going to go after you. Um, Maybe you have the possibility of potentially switching him to the linebacker position with that mindset there. And then the final pick of the draft. I'm going to try to give this name a shot. Bear with me, folks. Uh, The Ravens select with the 250th overall selection, Washington defensive end, Zion Tupuapo Fetui. We'll just call him Zion. Uh, I tried. I said I'd give it a shot. Uh, Good size and frame for an edge rusher. He certainly looks the part, but very raw. Still got to put more together as far as that goes. So that is the full seventh round mock draft from Matt Miller. I'm going to give you my grade here in just a bit, but what I hear from you guys first, what do you think of what Matt Miller did? A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you right now, based on my reaction to Lad McConkey, it's not going to be an A from me. What's it going to be from you? Way in the comment section, tell us what you think. My grade is a C, a rough start to this mock draft going with Lad McConkey. Automatically, you weren't going to get an A when you went Lad McConkey off the jump. And I think that Matt Miller here waited too long to get offensive line help. I do like Dominic Pooney, don't get me wrong. Uh, good pick in the third round, but. You're the Baltimore Ravens in their position right now. you got to use a round one or round two pick to get offensive line help, maybe even both potentially. To recap, here's the picks for the Baltimore Ravens from Matt Miller. Lad McConkey in the first round. Uh, Mike Sainstrill in the second. Dominic Pooney in the third. Uh, Trevin Wallace and Bucky Irving in the fourth. Then you got to round off the draft. Keith Randolph at 165. Tyler Grable at 218. Evan Williams, one of the best names in the draft at 228, and then our boy Zion at 250. So, what was your favorite pick from ESPN's mock draft here? Of all nine picks of what they projected, what was your personal favorite? Mine was going with a Jayhawk like Dominic Pooney. That was nice to see, and it would be a good fit for Baltimore. I have no complaints with that at all. What would be yours? Weigh in the comments section. Let us know what you think, and we shall see you Next time, here on Ravens Rundown, continuing draft coverage here on the channel. Subscribe now. We'll see you next time.